Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla. Let's go over the market and a pretty wild day in the market as it is. So we're going to go over all of that, talk about what I you know, see happening moving forward and all that good stuff. Uh, don't forget Tesla's earnings in, is in about a week and a half. That's something important to, under, you know, to you know, remember that's happening, right? It is, of course, going to be on the April uh, uh, 23rd of April, which is not the coming Tuesday, the one after. But anyway, let's just get into it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. This is not financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is down below for just $3 a month. You can access to all my intraday thoughts, posts, updates, etc. on Tesla every single day as we're trading, as the market's moving, etc. on Tesla, again, every single day. And, you know, we talked about how, you know, and I, I was talking to my members again throughout the day. The daily still looks like it's retesting the overall breakout here. This is when Tesla was falling during the day, right? It was at like, what, 168 or something like that here, right? I talked about it here. It seems like the 618 FIB level around 167.5 may be the play here. That will put Tesla on the one hour chart into oversold territory. And if we do get there, I expect a bounce from that 167 level. And I think we got a bit of a bounce from that 167 level, which was pretty much right down here. Now, I didn't get exactly to 167. It actually got to 168 and a half, but pretty darn close. So let's talk about all this and, you know, what we can expect moving forward. So uh, yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, guys. That's up a lot. This is very much appreciated. So we're range bound here in a way. So I want to explain a few things. Now, the reason that we bounce from this general rare, right, which, you know, you remember I talked about this a few days ago, right? Remember, I, I think even yesterday I, I may have uh, uh, talked about it as well, how, you know, with the movement that we had here, right, this was the 0.5 level bounce, right? We talked about that yesterday, how, you know, if we do the FIB here, right, this was the 0.5 level bounce, but we can potentially get pretty close to that 0.618 level bounce, which is about that 167 and a half ish level. We didn't get exactly quite to it, but we got pretty darn close to it, right? Again, my FIBs aren't drawn to absolute perfection, right? It's just a rough idea. And, you know, we got pretty close to that general level, that 0.5618 or 0.5 and the 0.618 level in between. With a beautiful bounce and obviously a pretty powerful bounce. Now, granted, this isn't just Tesla specific, right? The market itself was just rocketing higher today, right? Q spy all just absolutely rocketing higher with Apple may, pretty much mainly leading the charts and absolutely astronomical rally for Apple today, up about 4.3% for Apple. That's a pretty that's a pretty big day for Apple. That's that doesn't happen very often where Apple rockets this hard. So it pretty much led the charge for the market to just rally, which Tesla obviously thankfully followed. Now what happens next, right? Like what's the next thing that can happen here? So the first thing to notice is the fact that we couldn't actually close any candles above 175, right? That's still a very important level. Like I've talked about before, we've closed, uh, closed candles here, we closed candles here, but then, you know, we're just constantly zigzagging up and down between 175. And in this case, we're turning it back into a resistance, but it is above some nice looking volume here. Another reason, another thing that was important to understand is the fact that we had two pretty massive, especially this one, fair value gaps, right? When you leave these fair value gaps like this, where essentially you get a massive gap up and it's a distance between the next candles low and the previous candles high. So it creates this fair value gap right here, right? Usually what happens with these fair value gaps, especially these bigger ones, is you come back to retrace into them after the gap up. So you get this gap up, you kind of do your thing over here. And then ultimately you end up at some point retracing pretty often back to around the middle point of this level which is exactly where we went when we bounced off of that i may have mentioned that in yesterday's video i think i did actually but that's exactly what happened right now as we kind of you know find this little ranged bound you know situation here the way i look at it is this so you know as I said in yesterday's video, the overall important levels still remain to be, you know, this 160 down here and this pretty much 183 up here, right? And we're pretty much range bound in that, you know, range uh, until one of those levels breaks. But we have a potential early indication as to which direction will ultimately break uh, above or below uh, based on today's price action. And the reason I say that is because if you look at it here, right, ever since this high over here and this low over here, we started, you know, so we're from this high, then we went to this low, and then we went to this high here, which ended up being a lower high. And then we came down here and got a beautiful bounce today, which ended up being a higher low. So we set a lower high, higher low, right? And the way I look at it is, again, this is more of the, just like a giving us a potential hint as to which of the main levels will break, right? Again, 183, 160, right? We can take this little range that we're starting to, you know, set higher lows, lower highs. Put these two lines here. So if we break one of these two levels, that can potentially indicate which main uh, resistance or support will break. So as an example, right, if let's say sometime, who knows, tomorrow, next week, whatever, at some point, I don't know when, but at some point we break above this high that we set yesterday, which is pretty much around, we'll just say 179 roughly, right, or about 179. That most likely indicates that there's going to be a pretty darn good chance in 
my opinion, could be wrong, but in my opinion, that 183 will most likely break next and most likely will, will continue that way. I think it increases that chance quite significantly. However, on the flip side, if we fall back down and if we, if we start losing the low that we had today, which is about 168 and a half, and if we start losing that, that to me tells me that at least we come back down to somewhere around this 162 to 160 level once again, maybe set a triple bottom, who knows, but it does increase the possibility and the chances of us now dropping and cracking below the 160 60s and potentially actually making our way to the 150s if not potentially even the 140s so that's kind of the range bound situation that i personally find ourselves in right now people i'm sure going to be wondering okay but which one do you think will happen i have no idea and i'm not here to you know try and predict something for no reason like i don't need to know right i don't care which one happens necessarily right if it goes up if it goes i don't care i'm positioning myself for both scenarios i will just simply play my option strategy where i sell options especially if we're just considering uh, consistently still trading sideways and doing nothing Overall, that's great for me, but I will let the levels dictate it. Again, it's that simple. If we break above this or break above this here, one of these two levels I just mentioned, great. That most likely will mean that we get continuation in that respective direction and potentially even start really increasing the chances of breaking that main level above or below it, 183, 160. That's the main way I'm looking at this kind of situation right now. And the next thing I want to talk about is, of course, going to be my favorite indicator, the band's regression. The band's regression here is pretty interesting because, well, as we came down into this level, fair value gap, pretty much that 618 Fibonacci level, we also entered over sold territory which is what i talked about somewhere around here right here finding that bounce so far around that 162.7 ish level the fair value gaps are powerful we filled the red one this morning now we came back to the bottom right and we bounced and reverted to a neutral stance as we wait to pick a direction right and then we got that bounce beautifully right there right because we started entering that oversold territory on the one hour chart so that's you know another indication that it could be a bounce now i obviously i played this i wish i went heavier of course but i did end up selling a cash secured put pretty much right at the near near the bottom of that uh, situation there and you know obviously that's going to expire worthless at this point i sold it for tomorrow which is like a quick trade but that's, like, that's still like free like 100 bucks right just over the course of a day for doing a whole lot of nothing with very very little risk in my opinion it's not that bad right and that's kind of the, like the ways i like to play right sometimes enter these smaller trades obviously bigger trades and more conviction so for instance if we do you know oversold or overbought on the four hour that's a bigger story that's a, that's more impactful but that's the way i look at it here now the last thing i want to talk about on the one hour chart before we uh, go back to the daily chart is going to be this right so we had a massive pump we set a bunch of fair value gaps below but the main thing i, I care about here is the fact that again we couldn't close above 175 on the one hour we tried but the last like 10 minutes of the day just sold off pretty aggressively if we go to the one minute chart you can see this sell off right here right but one more, more importantly we set up a, a, a inverted hammer candle on the one hour chart this is an inverted hammer candle the last candle right here right this one here which can potentially signal uh, a profit taking friday tomorrow that is a possibility so just keep that in mind tomorrow might be a profit taking day it really wouldn't surprise me so I, i'm prepared for that i'm, I'm ex kind of expecting that i'm not you know 100 percent guaranteed it'll happen but i'm expecting a bit of a profit taking friday potentially you know a little bit red i don't think it'll necessarily have to be like a massive sell-off we just come right back down right but i definitely think sideways if not probably slightly red at the moment is what i'm personally expecting we'll see of course how it actually plays out now let's go over to the daily chart now the daily chart is pretty interesting here as well why well because well we have uh the uh what well, could have been a pretty nice looking hammer candle right the reason this is nice is because well you know like I said, we broke out of this wedge, right? We broke out of this wedge, these two kind of, uh, you know, hollow lines, if you will, right here, right? These little channels here, All right? We broke out, came back down today, retested it, just like I mentioned in my video, or not the video, the members channel right here, you can see, this was literally us retesting it right here. I can even click on the image, zoom it in, right? This was us retesting it earlier today. Beautiful retest, and that's exactly, it obviously went a little bit lower because we went to 168 and a half, but this is just a visual depiction of roughly what it looked like. Now, as we move back to the chart, right? Obviously a beautiful bounce, but you know, this could have been a nice looking hammer candle, right? But this isn't, in my opinion, a hammer candle. And the reason for that is because the wick at the top is a little bit too, too, too large. I guess this is not, it's not the worst hammer candle. Like it's got definitely some characteristics of a hammer candle, but I would equate this in strength of what it means equal to about a red hammer candle which you know people that follow the channel and follow me right they know that red hammer candles even though they are a hammer candle i don't personally put a crazy amount of conviction into them and this is kind of in the same category not that it's red but mainly because the wick at the top is a pretty it's pretty large like this is not the kind of wick i want to see for a hammer candle uh at the top this it's a little bit too large and if we didn't have this wick at the top then the body of the candle would have been too large relative to the wick below so it's a very kind of so so looking hammer candle a good hammer candle in this case it's an inverted one but nonetheless is this one very small wick down below massive massive wick above it with a nice small body this right here if in theory to take this one and flip it 180 
is what a hammer candle should look like uh, for the bullish side. This is a kind of like a bearish looking inverted hammer candle. So we'll see how that plays out. But even with that being said, right, all I think this means is the fact that tomorrow most likely won't be a massive follow through day. Again, maybe a slight, uh, a slow bleed day, but we still ended up coming back down to retest this channel, uh, uh, descending channel breakdown or descending um, wedge breakdown, if you will. So far successfully and so far looking pretty decent. And I still think Tesla overall doesn't look too shabby here. I really don't. But, you know, we are still getting rejected by the 175 level, which is a little bit of a concern, right? And I think the easiest way to play this is really just to wait for either one of these two levels, which really aren't far above or below us, right? For instance, it's only like what? Three and a half percent below us and only about two and a half percent above us to break and one of the, once one of these decides to finally break well then we're kind of chilling and then we finally got a direction that you know we can kind of more convincingly be you know comfortable with if that makes sense so that's the main way i'm looking at it and that's the main way i'm playing it the weekly chart again stochastic still starting to flip bearish or bullish here the macd's flat lining which is good it's not you know trending downwards anymore though i mean how much more down actually you can go a lot more down never mind but you know it is starting to base a little bit here which is a good thing to see as well the monthly chart looking like a potential hammer candle setting up here though of course we have a substantial amount of time left in this month before you know it ends off so we'll see how that plays out but with that being said and done that's kind of the main thing i'm seeing in terms of options flow you can see tesla was the second highest bearish flow of 16.2 million nothing crazy honestly nothing major for tesla uh, and unfortunately it's nowhere to be found in the bullish flow category over here so definitely more of a bearish and a bullish day for tesla's flow today that doesn't mean that's the way the chart moved but the flow but again i don't 16.2 million for tesla isn't anything crazy considering yesterday i think we had like what 250 million in call flow or something or bullish flow so keep that in mind uh options flow overall nothing too wild in my opinion nothing that really caught my eye that i was really like wow okay well that's interesting maybe this one here but 2.56 million put that came in at 1 10 p.m but they're already under the money on this right it's a 185 strike so at least they're not ridiculously under the money because they you know went heavily in the money on the strike call but you know they did it at 173 and around 174.6 so they're obviously still losing on this and it's for tomorrow so you know nothing really caught my eye that you know makes any sense right now at least for options flow uh, for today but that's kind of what i'm seeing today ladies and gentlemen let me know what you think down below if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit that like button uh, make sure you join the members section down below the link is in the description for just two dollars and 99 cents a month again i post all these kind of informations throughout the day every single day that tesla is trading so if you think you'll find it useful for just three dollars a month link is below but all that being said thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow peace